Hello everyone, welcome to From the Heart. I'm Joshua. And I'm Mary. We're excited to bring to you all that's new and good when it comes to the arts at Central Florida. Joining us today is Betsy Gwynn, Executive Director of the Bach Festival Society of Winter Park. She's here to tell us her vision for the future of the Bach Festival Society, in addition to her own personal goals. Welcome back, Betsy. Thank you. We're so glad to have you. So do, tell us about um, just the future of the Bach Festival Society. What does it look like? I think we have an extraordinarily bright future. We're uh, celebrating our conductor John Sinclair's 25th anniversary with a new commission by Paul Moravec and Terry Teachow. And it's really spurred um, an interest of ours to go down the path of recording. Mm -hmm. We released, uh, we've released a few recordings, a terrific one in 2013 of Christmas songs. We recorded the Mozart Requiem and released mm -hmm. that at our festival this year. Wow. And now we're looking at maybe a more niche recording in the works of Paul Moravec. And Paul Moravec is a Pulitzer Prize winning um, composer and he's just, he's done several smaller works for choral societies like ours. And, and so we're pursuing a recording project of some of these smaller but just gorgeous works. Uh, that will be released in a few years. So, How do you record 160 singers and a full orchestra? I bet that is no small task. No, and we've done it, we've done it both together, and then we've also recorded them separately, mm. where they're combined in the, in the production process. So you don't do it in a live performance, you go into a studio? We have recorded live performances, but typically we don't release those on a CD because you'll have, yeah. you'll have audience noise. But mm -hmm. we, we do record, so the Mozart recording was a recording of our choir and orchestra performing together. Our Christmas recording, we had a studio recording of our orchestra and then a studio recording of the choir and they were combined later. Mm -hmm. Where would you go and what studio do you go to that can house that many singers? And We record the singers in our concert hall, in the Tiki mm -hmm. Concert Hall. And then Stark Lake Studios oh, sure. is where we record our instruments. Yeah. We love Stark Lake That's Studios. I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So tell us, you know, Bach Festival Society is so well respected in our community and really one of the organizations that le that's leading the way in keeping the arts a focus here in our in Central Florida. Um, tell us what do you think the future looks like for the arts in general here in our community? I think I think the time has never been stronger for the arts. Mm. The opening of the Performing Arts Center, I think, has really been a boon to the community. People are going out, they're having these new experiences there and throughout the community. I think it's it's an opportunity for people to be proud and engaged and curious, and they're looking mm. at what else is, is happening in the community. Uh, my, my colleagues at the Repertory Theater, the Orlando Philharmonic, Shakespeare, the Art Museum, the Science Center, all of them are doing terrific work, um, collaborative partnerships, mm. interesting and creative programming, and, and I think it, it can't be stronger. Mm. You just mentioned collaborative partnerships. Is there any group in town you've not worked with yet or a type of art you've not worked with yet that you'd be curious to see? your singers work with? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, we we love collaboration because it's those opportunities that really, I think, bring each party uh, to a higher level. Mm. We've done some extraordinary collaborations recently. Carmina Burana with the Orlando Ballet, who we hope to work with again. Mm. Um, Robert Hill was one of our guests, and he said it was one of the greatest things he's done since he's it been It was, there. and it just embodied what what collaboration, that spirit of collaboration. So we mm -hmm. had his artistic vision in the choreography and John's vision for the music and they came together and you know the sum was greater than the parts. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's an opportunity to work with everyone. Mm -hmm. I, I really do. It's time and resources which get in our way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and collaborations and partnerships help you see that you're not an island. When you work together like that, they're pulling the resources is wonderful. We love collaborations and partnerships as well at Central Florida Community Arts. We're about to do one, uh, so we're excited about that. Yeah. But tell us, why do, why do we need the arts in our community? I mean, we know all of the, the great answers and the cliche answers out there, but for you personally, why do we have to have the arts in our community? I think the arts feed your soul like nothing mm. else can. Mm. And it's the hardest thing to put into words or to monetize or to incrementalize like so many um, 
you know, so many bureaucrats want to do. They want, they want you to monetize the value of the arts. And I, we do have a community impact that you can measure, but that personal experience, mm -hmm. you can't measure. We have choir members that have told me that singing in the choir and finding our choir has truly saved their lives. Yes, I agree. We, yeah. <laughs> I we've had time, members of our audience <laughs> after a performance say that it was absolutely transforming. Mm -hmm. If they were mourning a loss of someone or celebrating something, that experience was unlike any other. I'm getting goosebumps thinking yeah. about it. You can't, you, and, and the opportunity our choral singers have for taking their experience back to their church choirs mm -hmm. or our players taking the performance experience back to their college students or their, the young students that they teach. Having those resources and investing in them mm -hmm. with opportunities is good for every facet of our community. And I, everything from education of, of young kids to mm -hmm. engagement of seniors, the it, arts it do it. It connects people it too. Absolutely. It absolutely does. And mm -hmm. it makes this community unique. Mm -hmm. Art changes and saves lives. You said it perfectly. It really, really does. Uh, can you tell our listeners why they should love and appreciate classical music? Because that's a part of your mission is to make sure people are exposed to that art form. Why do we still need that today? It is. I, and John Sinclair says it beautifully. He says, classical music and the music we do is the protein of, mm. of your music education. <laughs> It's what feeds your soul. You can enjoy pop music he calls Twinkies. <laughs> you can enjoy them, but right. <laughs> learning about and, and participating in these great classics is just, it's so rich and nourishing. And, mm. and, and we take continuing that very seriously. Mm. For some reason, listening to this, now I'm hungry. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> so well put, I want to listen Betsy. to some Bach. That's what I want to do. We'll feed you. Um, thank you so much. This has been so Absolutely. enlightening. And one more time, will you give us your web, web address? Just I want to make sure people have it. It's BachFestivalFlorida.org. Awesome. Thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Great. Please go to that website. Uh, thank you so much for joining Joshua and I to all of you at home. We're sure here wishing we could spend more time with Betsy. She's been wonderful. We hope you'll stop by the Bach Festival Society for a concert. And when you do, look for Betsy and tell that Mary and Joshua say hello. From the heart. <laughs>